to understand. OK, so today the things that we are planning for is uh, something that will connect most of the dots that we have, let's just say, available. So let's just say, let's just talk about that. So um, if I say I have a cap project, I have, let's just say, n number of entities over here. I'll just simply n number of entity, for example, entity one. Uh, let me just call it as a some sort of an assessment. Okay, and uh, let's just say I have my entity two over here. Right, uh, and as a part of doing an assessment, certain observations are being noted. Okay, so I can say it entity two. Now, whenever you are working on any of the business object, whenever you are use working on any of the business use case, right? What happens is there will be some assessment that you would be doing in that assessment. Uh, if I consider as one of your, uh, let's just say, uh, some sort of your parent entity, right? It can have some sort of a things that it will be associated to. I can say some sort of a child entity, correct? So there can be some parent and child relationship or child and parent relationship, some sort of, uh, I can say, association or composition relationship between multiple kind of a data. OK, so theoretically we know that OK, if I say I'm creating an ass assessment, it can have a number of observation, but how while developing a data model, we can define the relationship between the entity. So my uh, system, so my data model also mimic that particular relationship and the same relationship start uh, getting visible on my application as well. So those things, how we can do that. So for that we have something called association and composition. OK, that's something that we'll see today uh, that how I can end, uh, link multiple entity which are linked with one another by the means of a relationship call it just as some sort of a one to one or one to many. OK, so how that can be done? That's something we'll see. Now while we are doing that, the idea is that there can be some parent and there can be some child so that parent and child relationship ideally depend on the kind of data model that you do have. OK, so many a time I have a data model where I have one parent, one child. So parent is anyway going to be. One, but there can be multiple childs out of it. So depending on your application use case, you can define n number of association with it. OK, so let's just try to see this practically how those things are going to be mimicked. Other than that, the another thing that we have planned, let's just say the one which we are going to also see today is that when I have such a relationship, I can also expect that my final application will also mimic that relationship. Correct. It means I can have some, for example, some sort of a list over here and out of which, for example, I can have some sort of a, uh, let's just say, uh, record. So for example, I have one record over here, another, another record over here another record over here. So for example, if someone is trying to open this particular record from here saying, hey, I would like to open this particular record. The moment someone clicks on that, a detail page will be open. Oh, sorry. A detail page will be open for that, right? And in that particular detail page, I can expect that there will be both the kind of information. At some point in time, there will be some, uh, let's just say, a header data which will be visible for assessment. There will be some uh, table as well, which will be visible, which will show some sort of observations. So multiple entity level information should also be visible over here at the same point in time for a single business object for a single record because that particular thing is practically possible and the most it's a most common scenario in any business object, right? That in a single data object, I can have n number of information persisted. So how that can be done, how we can once after a relationship has been established, how we can create our UI using which our uh, information will be shown on this in this format. Plus not only in this preview mode, right? Once after we have seen that idea is how we can ensure that this particular application which is created by consuming uh, let's just say backend cap data service can be deployed published onto my cloud foundry and how I can view or I can say how I can make it available for my end user to be used as a tile. That's something we'll also see today. OK, so let's just go step by step. 
so we understand the uh, data model technicality then we'll go into the designing part of it okay so let's just go over here and here we'll create one more project so for example i'll say simply cds in it and uh, maybe let's just say we are going to create some sort of a full stack project so let's just say btp full stack project okay let's just clear this out and maybe let's just start working on the one which are on which we are currently focused on okay so what we'll do is we'll simply create a uh, like a data model like we always used to have i'll just simply open a terminal for just for you to understand that whenever you are working on any sort of a uh, let's just say data model which contains some sort of a association composition do not worry if you are let's just say making any mistakes syntactically because your cds watch ideally keeps pointing you okay if there is something that you are doing wrong okay i'll tell you what so for example i'll just say i'll create a data model right and i would like to create this relationship that we just mentioned that there can be an entity called assessment there can be an entity called let's just say observations so in an assessment for example i'm doing an assessment for let's just say a car then the quality check person might have come up with a multiple observation saying hey this particular headlight could have been in this direction uh, let's just say uh, in this shape there can be some more things from a quality perspective that he might observe and maybe would be doing in his observations man uh, let's just say um, list so that could be there so we want a relationship where a single assessment can have n number of observations maintained but if you think about the reverse way and single observation over here can only be associated with one of the assessment if there is some other observation it might be relevant to some other observation it means if i think about a relationship okay from my uh, if i think about a relationship from my assessment to uh, let's just say some sort of a observation then i can think that a single assessment can have n number of observation can have n number of observation it means there can be a uh, there can be uh, let just say some sort of a one to many relationship but when i think about a scenario where i can have one observation definitely that observation will be linked to only one assessment at a time it means a observation has one assessment to which it link, it is linked to so i can say it's nothing but a some sort of a, a one to one relationship it can have so we are just trying to think about a hypothetical scenario using which we can mimic one to many one to one uh, relationship those are possible okay and i can say when i say one just think about it's like two one on the left hand side we are thinking about a one but it can be a zero to one okay i'll just go over here and i'll try creating a data model i'll just give it a namespace so for example i'll just simply say btp.fs for example uh, let me say i'll just use certain aspects as well because as we are going to create a record uh, and data via our uh, i can say now fury application as well we'll see okay whether my user and everything is being captured correctly i'll just say entity and as we are talking about assessment i'll just say okay and here maybe i'll add few more things so for example the assessment can have some description okay and here i'll just simply say uh, this description will be of 255 character there can be some start date okay there can be some start date to it i'll just simply say date and there can be some end date to it as well i'll just simply say date over here okay so i created a assessment and i'll just simply say that its id should be created by uh, generated id and i want who created and when the data is going to get changed i want those information as well so i created one entity called assessment i'll create one more entity over here called observations okay 
and here maybe we'll again add the information whatever we want. If you don't want to store when it was created and changed, you can get rid of that as well. If there are some observation. Uh, I'll just simply say for example, it's uh, what is the purpose of it? Why or what is that particular observation? And maybe let's just say if there are some observation. I'll just say whether that's a critical. So I'll just say whether that's a critical observation that needs to be fixed. I'll just simply add one more field over here of type Boolean, for example. If someone says critical, it means that needs to be fixed. So I'm just thinking about hypothetical business scenarios. OK, now you have defined two entity. It does not have relationship between any of uh, between each other. Correct now. What I would like to have over here is that if I say I would like to have some sort of an assessment first, what I'll create. I'll first create an assessment, right? Because once I have created an assessment object, once I have click on a create button over here, the basic information which I'll enter over here will be of the header data, not the child item, correct? So first I'll create a assessment information. Once that has been entered, then definitely observation is something that is going to get created. It means without an existence of an assessment, it's not possible for my observation to exist. Okay. In such a scenario, ideally what we go ahead with is called composition. OK, so I can say. There are different different way of creating a relationship between entity. A relationship between entity. OK, and relationship between entity can be either a strict. Or it can be a non strict. That whether this relationship if I am saying that whether the same sequence should be followed or it's OK if first child is getting created then parent. OK, so if that kind of relationship is quite strict, we can call it as a composition. OK, and there can be certain relationships which are not strict. OK, so for example, if I am saying I have an assessment, but does it really mean that if I am doing an assessment, I'll have some observation? Not really, right? I mean, I can have some assessment which went through. I don't have any observation. I thought okay, everything is everything went well. I'll just add a description, start date, end date, and that's it. I'll just complete it. So that's also possible. So something where it does not need for a record to exist in the other entity. If there is a record in the uh, let's just say uh, it's associated entity, then we'll go with an association. OK, let's just take an example. So for example, if I say I am creating an observation over here, then I'll simply say that my one observation, as I mentioned over here, is linked to one assessment. How we'll write this technically? You will simply say that if I have an observation, I'll just simply say this assessment over here. You can have any name on the left hand side just to um, make you understand. The moment you do that, it says mismatch this because you added a column. It means you are supposed to add some more information, whether that's a column or a association. I'll just simply say association and you will get options to one or too many. So I'll say an assessment over here. So an observation can be linked to one assessment. So I'll just say association to one and I'll just simply say assessment. OK, now the moment you do that, I won't specify any on condition. I won't specify any on condition, but the moment you specify assessment, what the system will do is system will try creating a column with the name. OK, over here in this particular entity, what will be the name of it? The name of it will be the name of association. Underscore. Underscore the primary key of the above entity, which is nothing but ID in this case. So it will create a uh, column with the name called. Assessments underscore ID, so there will be a column which will be created called assessments ID, which is going to store the assessment ID of the assessment to which any of the observation is linked to. So in a way, if you see that you are not writing that directly, but system is trying to create a column which will store the relationship. Saying OK, if there is an observation which assessment it is linked to. Now let's just think other way around. If I say an assessment can have n number of observation. Can a observation exist without a let's just say can an observation exist without 
my um, assessment uh, exist assessment existence no right so what i'll do is i'll just create an assessment uh, i'll create a relationship over here for example let me call it as a observations okay and here i'll just simply say composition because it's a, com a strict relationship without one entity without assessments existence child cannot exist so i'll just simply say composition of i'll just simply say many okay and here what i'll specify is composition of many observation but which observation because here there are thousands of observation which observation which assessment is linked to okay i'll just simply say composition of many observation where and where condition ideally in uh, join where how do we specify by using on keyword so i'll say on and you will specify observation on the left hand side. So now the observation, now any keyword that you have used on the left hand side is a representation, is a representation of this entity. OK, so the moment you specify that you will ideally be able to use, I can say, find all those properties which are available in the child entity because it says it's composition of this. It means it's a type. The type of this particular entity is going to be the child entity. That's the reason you see you are getting description is critical everything, right? But when you are saying that observation does this, I'll say assessment of this should be matching with the current primary key of this. So I'll just simply say dollar self. When you say dollar self, it means the current records unique identity. The ID of it should match with the assessments ID over here. And that's the reason you are specifying observations dot assessment is dollar self. OK, now what does it mean is that a single assessment can have multiple observation. It will compose all the observation where this particular relationship has been met. OK. Now. Next thing that we are going to go ahead with is we'll just see how this relationship has been exposed when it comes to an O data service. OK, so I'll just simply try to create a service over here. So for example, I'll just simply say create and uh, let's just simply uh, try creating a service. So as we are kind of creating a full stack application. Let me just call it as a full stack service. Dot CDS. OK. And maybe we'll uh, simply use our. BTP dot FS. SBF for example, and maybe we'll just get it via the data model and maybe we'll just simply say service uh, some sort of a full stack service. OK, and I'll expose this. I'll just simply say I'm exposing an assessment over here. As select from my uh, BF dot assessment and at the same point in time, I am also exposing my uh, let's just say observations. As. Select. From my BF dot observations, OK. Now what I'll do is I'll just try opening this particular whole data service. OK, and now the moment I view the metadata now let's just observe the properties. OK, so in the assessment while specifying what all thing we specified, we specified that it can have this three column plus my this aspect will give me an ID and this aspect will give me four more columns. So three uh, plus one four plus four eight and there is one association as well. Now if I just go over here. Not this one, this one assessment. It will have an ID as a primary key. This four property description start date and date plus my composition or association will get converted into a navigation. OK, and if the navigation mentioned over here has a relationship called many. OK, it will be created as a collection because it says that this particular assessment can have many of many lines associated with it which are of type observation. OK, now if I just go over here. What it also mentioned automatically is that on delete cascade because it's a strict relation it, it because it is saying that it is a strict relation. You will simply also get that if I am deleting a parent, a child will also get deleted on the cascade manner. OK, which is also even better. Now if I go over here, it says observation. I have all those property which I specify on top of it. I have a navigation plus it has got one more property over here. You see it says assessments ID. It means that 
the moment you specified this right assessments and association to one it added one more property without you asking for it called the assessment id which is going to store the relationship of the primary key entity over here okay and it this relationship is going to be of type one that's the reason you don't see collection over here of the assessment so it's related to one of that particular one and you see referential constraint it says the assessment id which you see over here is linked to the id of this particular type which you specify over here so it's a kind of an join that you ideally specify join or association but the syntax over here is bit different which is kind of in a more human readable form so that you know what you are writing that's the only idea behind that okay now when we are talking about uh, association to one that's fine when we are talking about uh, let's just say uh, i'll just simply um, remove this i can say i'll just shift this so that it's not in between okay now what you specified is i can have an association which can have observations and all now there can be certain more thing as well certain more things as well so for example if i'm specifying an assessment there can be some common observations okay there can be some common observations as well a master data as well okay so which can which may all uh, which might also be linked to it so for example if i'm saying kind of assessment i am doing so for example i am doing an uh, assessment of let's just say uh, type or i let's just say category so assessment category which i am doing over here could be uh, anything so i'll just simply say string 50 and maybe what i'm thinking about over here is that this particular category can be let's just say some sort of a quality check or let's just say a physical strength check some sort of a regression check i could be doing anything now for that someone has created for example or i can say you have created one master data as well Okay, so, so for example, you are saying that whenever I'm saying uh, some sort of observation, so I'll just say observation master. Okay, and in this observation master, for example, you are specifying some sort of a data and you are saying that the category, each particular, um, this particular thing will be having string 50 and there will be some default description to it saying um string 255 it means that if i am saying that i have a uh of assessment application which are being used definitely it will be used for different different purposes so for example certain will be used for some sort of uh, uh let's just say if the application is being used in automobiles right it might be used for some sort of a body uh part check body part inspection body part assessment Okay, then there can be some common observation if there is any scratch. Okay, if uh, let's just say there is some dent, could be possible. If let's just say the same thing is being used for let's just say engine part, then there can be some common observation saying uh, let's just say some sort of a plug missing, or let's just say there is some corrosion, anything. So there can be some master data which someone would have prepared and you would like to show the common reason which are the main uh, let's just say observation which any particular person who is performing the inspection should also be doing possible right so those all the thing you can also link as a uh, let's just say association to the relevant entity but just to understand even though for a single assessment there can be multiple entries in my assessment master based on the category but does that mean that the data in observation master cannot exist even without let's just say an assessments creation no right master data will be created before right so what you might do is you will just say observation master over here can be definitely linked to my uh, this particular entity with the relationship uh, let's just say too many but it won't be a composition because it exists without even existence of my assessment right so what you can do is you can simply say it can be associated to many observation master over here okay in a way that observation masters category over here is matching with the category over here this happening oh, okay 
Oh, uh, observation master. OK, yeah, I just missed one thing on observation master dot category, right? On condition, I just missed the on keyword. So what you are seeing over here is that you are saying an assessment can have a composition as well, which will be created along with this. But it can have observation master which already exists, but I can have an assessment where observation master is already linked to it. So in that case, you will use an association to many because the existence are not dependent. Correct. So if I just now refresh this, okay, I might not have see might not see this because uh, my entity is yet to be exposed. So I'll just simply say entity over here, observation master as select from. BF dot this one and let me just call it something which is meaningful when it comes to an entity. I won't say observation master. I'll just say master observations. I just close this anyway. Refresh this. Now as you can see it says observation master over here which is also of type collection of this but as you can see as it's an association the on delete is not cascaded. It means even though you delete assessment, your master entry are not going to get deleted because they are central. You are saying it's associated, not composed of. Make sense? Now you see the difference between an association and composition. Why I am calling one as a strict and why as a non strict. Anyone having any doubt on this association and composition concept, when to use it? Because this is something you will definitely use in uh, a data model, whichever you would be preparing. OK, seems good. Now. Let's just move ahead. So what we'll do is as we have created this, we'll try to uh, view some sort of uh, let's just say uh, relationship. So we'll try to uh, let's just give it some sort of a UI behavior to it. So we'll uh, let's just create a normal uh, LROP, a list report object page kind of a thing for that. Let's just try to enrich this thing. So how will I enrich that you? We have already done it a couple of time right in the past, so we'll just proceed with the same direction over here. So we can have n number of such a relationship. We'll just go with two for now. For example, assessment and observation over here. OK, so I'll just simply say I would like to perform an uh, op, uh, let's just say designing for my uh, parent, which is nothing but uh, assessment. So I'll just say full stack service dot assessment over here. OK, uh, I would like to expose or I can say enrich this um, with some sort of a meaning over here. So when I say with definitely I'm going to specify a property. Uh, I'm going to specify the design annotation, a, a table, field group, facet, and here I'm going to specify the property. So simply for example, I'll simply say full stack service uh, assessment. I would like to have some sort of a UI. Uh, things specified over here and I'll just simply say uh, I would like to have some column. So I'll just simply say line item and I'll add few columns over here. Okay. So let's just simply say I would like to specify some sort of a description. Uh, I would like to specify some sort of um, start date over here. Uh, end date over here. Uh, let's just uh, put the detail of a person who created. Uh, because we don't uh, want to overload uh, the data over here too much. So we'll just specify the information of the person who created this. This builds my list report or I can say table. Right next thing we would do is when a table has been created, we would like to expose uh, the other thing as well. So let's just say. I would also ensure that certain things which are not required are not exposed. So I'll just simply say property level. I ID over here. I'll just simply say UI and maybe I'll specify for a few property. For example, say hidden. I don't want ID to be visible because that's a more technical thing, right? Why would I show it to anyone? Uh, for example, I'll just say description and maybe I'll just simply say title. Uh, uh, maybe let's just say if I'm doing an assessment, what is the purpose of it? Uh, then I'll just simply say start date. Uh, and I'll just simply say start date over here. End date and I'll just simply say title. And there is an end date over here and rest properties I think has got a meaningful description already by itself. So we are not going to add it anyway. So 
So when we are doing this, we see OK, uh, something should have been anyway generated. I'll just go back and here maybe we'll just do a Fury preview for my assessment application. So I see this particular columns now visible over here and I see it uh, nicely. Uh, let's just say represent it here as well, right uh, now. I cannot let just say, see some sort of a create button over here. So how we can do that? We'll see that as well. Uh, and maybe we'll also go back and try to. Enrich some data, uh, some detail part of it. So when I say I'm going to click on detail, some header and the table should also be visible, right? So I'll just simply say I would like to view uh, some sort of uh, details. So for that, I'll create a some sort of a field group. I'll just simply say field group over here and in this field group will give some sort of a qualifier. For example, say basic data. And here uh, maybe we'll add some sort of a data property to it. So we'll add mostly everything that we do have. So I'll just simply say copy. And uh, we'll add few more things which we have not added into the table. So for example, the person who is going to modify it, I'll just say modified by let us add it first and then add modified by. Uh, modify it. OK, now after we did that, we have to ultimately add uh, one more thing called uh, let's just say. Uh, uh, facet so that this particular information is also visible, so I'll just simply say facets and here maybe we'll connect to the reference facet of it, which is nothing but a field group. So I'll just say field group reference basic data now. This becomes I can say this consider the story that we have anyway done in past as well. We have anyway created a list report. We have added this basic data, but how about this table? Now this table is coming for an observations data which has got its own set of entity, correct? So what are we currently enriching? We are currently enriching this assessment, right? We are saying full stack service dot assessment. We have to also enrich my observations so that it has got something which will be created in the form of a table, right? So I'll just simply go over here and I'll just simply say annotate and here I'll annotate my full stack service dot observations. OK, and I'll add just simply say with at the rate and here I'll just add this. OK, and here this time I'll just create a table for this one, which is nothing but a. Table which will be visible for my observation. I'm creating it separately, but we have to link it together so that these two things are visible. Uh, in a single uh, row. OK, I'll just simply say uh, description and maybe. Data field and maybe we'll just simply say is critical and maybe we'll also keep on adding the uh, purpose or let's just a person who created and let's just say. When it was created. OK, uh, plus let's just say ID definitely we also don't want it to be uh, visible over here. Uh, I'll just simply say. Description this time and here maybe I'll just say there is an observation, right? So I'll just name it as an observation. Technical name is same, but the purpose can be different. Okay, and uh, maybe is critical. OK, and uh, maybe. Uh, other things are anyway quite available by default. Now after adding this, we have to add one more facet for this one as well. So for this one, which is nothing but a basic data that we are specifying, let's just add a label over here called basic data. And let's just specify some ID as well to uniquely identify this. So I'll just say ID basic data. And we'll add one more facet for reference and this time the target for us this uh, the thing that will play an important role. So if you by default say control space, it will show you two three things. Whether you would like to add a field group, we already added. Whether you would like to add a line item that's already there, which is nothing but this line item. No, there is something which is for the parent. We want something for the child. So you will just simply say observations over here because that's a child that for which you just added some annotation. Then you will simply say slash and then you will see the UI line item. There is something I'll add. OK, so what it will do is it will target this observation 
annotation created over here and it found that okay it has got some line item would you like to show that i'll say yes and here i'll just simply say um, observation and i'll just simply say id i'll just say id uh, observation data okay so now we have seen this but one thing which was missing which was a create button why was that the case because you remember in maybe i guess our uh, um, second or third session we mentioned this sometimes draft any, enable exactly yeah any o data v4 service needs to have a draft capability in order for the crud to work for o and that's not for o data v4 service okay just to remind you any fury list fury element template okay won't give you a crud create button automatically for a v4 service if it's not a draft enable but if you are going with let's just say any sort of freestyle application or let's just say if you try creating triggering a post call on to this entity you can still do it even if it's v4 your create update delete are enabled but your template has been designed in a way that it does not give you because they are saying if you are going till v4 definitely draft also makes sense for you why are not why are you not using the advanced capability that it has got okay that's the idea but yeah thanks i guess it it means maybe you guys are trying so uh, you guys are let's just say doing the hands on of the things that we are covering so that's good to hear i'll just say assessment over here now we see we have got this purpose and everything i'll just click on create as you can see i can just simply show you this but the idea is you should also be seeing that the moment you click on create id create gets created over here right so this is something which is getting created the moment you click on create but you thanks to the cuid and is active entity is false because you are into the draft mode now you can add all those information but i am more interested in showing you this if i click on this one which is nothing but a, a create over here you will see i don't have much information right because i never added some sort of a information over here so i'll just close this and instead i'll just add some object page information for my observation as well okay so i'll just add some sort of a field group to it okay and here i'll just simply say field group and here i'll add some basic data for this as well basic data for my observation I'll just say data field, and here maybe we'll just simply say description. We want, and we want one more field call whether that say is critical. Okay, and we'll add a facet which will show this. Okay, and here we'll add a reference to it, and we'll just simply say that this basic data fs over here should be visible in the form of a some sort of a basic data. Okay, and here maybe we'll simply say ID over here, and maybe we'll simply say I would like to say ID of my observation basic data. Okay, now let's just say go over here. Click on create. And I have got this information, and if I click on this, I have also got this information. So I'll just say observation. I'll just say there is some sort of a scratch on, uh, let's just say front body, and I'll just simply say, yeah, this is critical because if someone is paying, let's just say lakhs of rupees, definitely he won't accept this. Okay. As you can see, currently it's anonymous, but the moment we integrate all the authentication and the moment we deploy, you will see the current user ID coming up over here. Purpose of it is, let's just say, um, um, check for pre-delivery. So if there is a car which is being, uh, let's just say, prepared for delivery, and there is a pre-delivery inspection which is going on. I'll just say I am starting this today, but by tomorrow I have to complete because by tomorrow I have to deliver that particular car. Okay, and I'll just simply say create. So there is something we can. Uh, use and easily without any sort of other relation, uh, other complex uh, complex Node.js code, we are able to do this. And we can have some sort of enrichment like we learned into the past. We can also use that. But the focus over here is 
how the relationship can be used to enter the data into multiple tables, which will ultimately form a basis of an actual business object data. OK, that's the main idea. That's what currently we are emphasizing on. OK, so this is how we enrich this. Now what we'll do is we'll see how this particular thing, which was just uh, uh, let's just say 